Welcome to the Future Is Now Digest, your source of information for everything that's happening revolving the new realities that the disruptive industry is facing in regards to the COVID-19 outbreak and beyond, where we combine the facts with some theories and we try to get to the bottom of the situation as we believe the truth is somewhere in the middle. I'm Miguel Francis Santiago and today we're going to discuss this interesting graph of facts that we were able to a mass. It all started in 2015 when a dry research paper appeared on one of the world's main scientific websites, nature.com. This is again 2015, uh, November 2015 to be precise. And the article was sent for review on June 12, 2015. Uh, it was all, it remained unnoticed by the general public for quite some time. Uh, what it discussed was that a group of scientists in 2014 at the University of North Carolina began a study. They took a non-dangerous human coronavirus of a Chinese bat with its surface protein, the SHCO14, and transferred it to the already known human SARS virus from the SARS pandemic of 2012. As a result, after a year of hard work, they successfully synthesized the in vitro and in vivo a brand new hybrid suitable for human epidemic, which was exactly what was needed to showcase at that point that there is a potential of modern coronavirus transforming into a SARS pandemic-like virus. Now, long story short, the US government didn't really like this research being conducted on the US territory, so they asked it to shut down. But instead of shutting it down, the group of scientists found a refuge in China, in Wuhan, where a level three biochem lab is still operating today. Now, the required lab for a test of such magnitude has to be a minimum of level four. So what they did in Wuhan, according to this paper, is they installed some special ventilation system to provide the extra necessary disinfection and almost take it up to level four. But it was never at the actual level four uh, security level for such a biochem experiment. Uh, another fact that we have aside from this, uh, and again, we're not suggesting here anything, we're not speculating, we're just laying out this graph of facts that we were able to amass, as I mentioned earlier, is that on October 2018, I'm sorry, 2019, about five months ago in Manhattan, New York, with the full support of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the John Hopkins University, which is the authoritative figure, or at least was the authoritative figure on the uh, numbers of the current novel coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, these two bodies, in part with the World Economic Forum, uh, organized a training exercise of sorts, uh, staged uh, something what they called Event 201, which was a gala dinner, beautiful chandeliers and everything, where they discussed with mainly the corporate leaders of the world, so companies like UPS, uh, Big Pharma, etc., uh, transportation companies uh, for citywide transportation, etc., how will they react to a potential global novel, I'm quoting, novel coronavirus pandemic? Again, you can go to this website. It's still up, it's the official uh, about us of the event, and you can read all about it. It almost reads like a Hollywood movie script, to be honest. But the point is, that's another fact that we have. Uh, and uh, this event, again, was held literally a month before the first, the, the K0, uh, according to the Chinese government, has had been originated in November 2019 of the current COVID-19 uh, epidemic. Uh, another thing to look at, and this is again a fact, is that by world standards, an, a pandemic, like there's an epidemic and there's a pandemic. A pandemic is something that occurs when you have at least 5% of the global population contracting a virus. Now that's a pandemic. That's when you close borders, that's when you stop the economy, that's when you get the military in, etc. Now, we currently, ladies and gentlemen, have created the same thing uh, at a stage where we have about a million cases, give or take, at the time of the release of this video, and about 5% of those are actually fatal, okay? Now, out of 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet, that's nowhere near a pandemic. 
Okay? Uh, not only that, so far in 2020, official statistics of the world, we had 14 million deaths from suicides, gun shootings, accidents, whatever, natural causes of death, 14 million. We had 13, almost 13.5 or so million births so far in 2020. Okay, again, these are facts. Just an array of facts that we were able to amass here. Uh, the media, currently, especially the mainstream media, as I love to call it, the MSM, uh, has been feeding on the fear, even, even sometimes going out of line to what the WHO has been saying. Because on March 28th, the WHO said that the COVID-19 is not an airborne virus. Literally what they said. It's a, it's a virus that you can only contract if somebody sneezes directly at your uh, surface of a hand or your face and then you touch and then you, you know, bite your nail or whatnot, rub your eye, and that's how you contract it. But what the media did, New York Post, New York Times, CNN, the next day, uh, two days later, I'm sorry, here's the information right here for you, March 30th, is they released COVID-19, 27 feet in the air, contraction zone, you know? This is literally two days after the WHO officially stated that this is not as airborne as we thought it is, okay? Again, these are an array of facts. Now, the impending global impact of this, obviously, is that already millions of people are losing their businesses, jobs, perhaps even billions, to be honest with you. So the impending economical and psychological and of course immune uh, damage of this is way beyond the 1 million infected people and 5% of them fatal right now due to the COVID-19. Uh, what does this hold for the future? We see the same QR codes appear in Moscow as there were in China to allow movement among the cities. We see more high-grade AI systems being installed and invested across the world by governments to keep control and track of the people. We see, of course, Nancy Pelosi proposing, so far rejected, but already proposing a digital dollar in the U.S. Congress. We see the French National Bank issuing uh, a search for a team just a few days ago. Here's the information, please. Uh, looking for people that can build uh, a euro franc on the blockchain for them, a digital currency that they can control and centralize. We see same thing with the ECB, the European Commission, uh, uh, creating uh, or wanting to, to create a euro token, okay? What does this all mean for us, for the world, and of course for the disruptive tech, decentralized nomads of the future? More technocratic control? You tell me. But to discuss this further, we have two wonderful entrepreneurs, women in blockchain, joining me today to discuss this f further. Selena C., the Vice President of Investment uh, Department at AA Union Capital, and Melanie Moore, uh, the CEO and founder of Bomb Protocol. Melanie is in Germany, and Selena is joining us from Switzerland. Ladies, welcome to the show. How are you today? Hello. Very good. Yeah. How about you? Well, we, we are yes that is the main that is the main uh, uh, agenda here for us is to stay healthy and stay vigilant during this uh, truly confusing situation now I hope I did not uh, in, in, induce any fear in you ladies with my uh, uh, you know uh, uh, mosaic of facts here but as I'm piecing these things together that I mentioned uh, it seems more and more that uh, I don't understand why the world is reacting this way to such low numbers of contraction, even though, uh, again, the hospitals are overfilled and whatnot, but there is still some contradictory information there because some countries uh, like the Czechoslovakia, for example, say that their hospital system is fine and they amassed a production of masks and have halted the uh, spring of the infections. But even then, I, according to the official numbers, this whole thing should not fit a case of pandemic. Um, uh, Selena, let's start with you. What do you think uh, about this? 2020 will be remembered as the quickest bear market in the equity market history. And uh, economic activities ground to a sudden halt due to the virus situation 
and leaving the investors concerned that the situation could turn into a severe cash flow crunch for companies and the households. In this case, uh, measuring expected uh, price uh, um, fluctuations in this case exceeding the levels seen during the financial crisis 12 years ago, the investors have seen the similarities that um, from 2008 to 2009, that the financial crash, uh, the index uh, S&P 500 around 57% already. So um, in this case, uh, we expect a severe uh, Slow down to send the global investment and the production and the trade to lows similar to the 2008 and the 2009 crisis. And as so far from uh, uh, beginning of this year um, until now, it has been decreased 34 percent. Right, and I and I know you're you're more of an economist. You're not, you know, a, a, a medical scientist where you would be able to answer, you know, whether the current numbers befit an actual pandemic. Uh, but before I get to Melanie with that question, I wanted to, to, to ask you in, in regards to the perhaps as an economist to a psychological level of effect to the fact that people are going to be depressed. People might be you, you, we might see more suicides on the rise as people literally lose like sand through their fingers, everything they had due to this. I mean, you mentioned numbers that are already way worse than the 20 uh, than the 2008 uh, economic crash. Uh, what do you think about the psychological effect of this? Could we see more uh, fatalities due to the actual, uh, to the psychological effect of this economic crash rather than the actual virus? Nowadays, the investors actually, they are holding the money back. They are in panic because this is, they have never seen since 2008 and the 2009, the crisis. And uh, basically we are expecting another 10 to 20% more down on the economy as well. And uh, in this case, the individual investors and also the hinge funds, they are holding back their money and to see how it goes. Because from now on, until six to eight weeks, as we could understand the most severely influenced areas like in Europe and the USA is likely uh, they needed to have the lockdown likely to last another six to eight weeks. So within these six to eight weeks, there's a lot of opportunities to pop up. But because previously people has already lost their portfolio from 30% even to 80%. So in this case, they are very scared, especially they are under the pressure of unemployment as well. And this this so, has got to hit, you know, people's immune systems. I mean, this has got to, uh, you know, just, just cause an over, exactly. overwhelming amount of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. immune disease, if and, you will, uh, for, just from the fact that you're, you can't do anything about it. You know, you're stuck home and if you, even if you have a pillow of savings, but all of a sudden, this thing is going to keep extending the lockdown. I mean, exactly. we have one of our no. uh, uh, friends, Mark Amati, who recently mentioned he spoke to people at the White House, some of his uh, contacts there. And the the, 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 the the actual insight from the White House is that this whole thing is going to be with us until August, you know, and that's yeah, that's more like another three or four months, you know. It really depends on how the government takes the measure to have the control. However, uh, one fact that we could see during our study and during our experience is the central banks and the government realized very quickly how important it is to contain the economic fallout from the mandatory lockdowns in response to the coronavirus outbreak. In this case, the liquidity facilities and asset purchase programs and the physical aid in the unprecedented amounts will help to um, uh, release some of the stress. And uh, the negative impact is partially moved from private to public balance sheets. So once the worst of coronavirus uh, pandemic is behind us, we believe that it will create a very um, attractive backdrop as well. Um, therefore, in, we can see like China's economy. 
sunk a sapl- uh, sharply in February during the coronavirus. Melanie, now, now but, I'd like to, before we get into sort of the uh, the research that Selena, you and your team have put together, uh, I'd like to go, yeah. uh, give Melanie a word and also uh, have her yeah. outlook on, again, the fact that this is a epidemic being called a pandemic and the fact that the economical strain uh, that is happening here perhaps is even more fatal than uh, the actual virus. And again, that's my point of view. I wanted to hear Melanie's viewpoint uh, on on that. Well, I think actually really for me, it's still a little bit too early to decide is this, you know, um, not really an epidemic. I would say the question is just every country is handling it. um, I mean, they try to align in how they handle it, but it's of course uh, very different. We have seen different models of of, um, dealing with the situation from China to Korea to Italy uh, to now Germany. I'm of course based here in Germany, so I see what uh, our government is uh, currently um, putting in action. And uh, I would say if you're in Italy and you um, see you know what's happening there and you um, face all these difficulties um, then that's very real yeah and you might have never seen and experienced something like this before um, and the uh, people um, the doctors or um, the nurses in in the hospitals are having very challenging situations but that's also how is a country prepared for you know, any kind of virus may be an epidemic or even uh, in a pandemic uh, situation. Have you seen what they're doing Um, in India? It's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. I mean, not only are they wearing uh, the Devbringer costumes and walking across the street with uh, those grass, uh, what you call sickles, you know, uh, but they're also actually hitting people uh, with sticks that break the quarantine. So it, it really is quite extraordinary how other how many countries from first to third world are, are, are treating this, you know? Yes. Um, but the thing is, you mentioned this uh, research paper from 2015. Uh, the interesting fact from Germany, for example, is that um, I think there was already a discussion in the German um, parliament in 2008, but I definitely know of one in 2012 where they were, um, the German government presented to um, the parliament, um, you know, these two uh, two cases of um, a national catastrophe. And one was uh, a a pandemic through a coronavirus, corona kind of virus. And actually, when you read the paper, I have it uh, also, I I got got it on my table. Um, It is kind of a, um, a script for handling such a pandemic, yeah? What do you need to put in action to, um, as, a, as a government to handle in, in the best um, means for your residents? And so sometimes I'm thinking now seeing what the government does, and I still believe uh, that our health minister is trying to put uh, a lot of good stuff in place um, with the best means. However, you sometimes think, why? so late or why you know why are uh, some some actions Very coming good uh, later than they Very good point Melanie and this is one of the main things that you know we've amassed on this mosaic uh, of facts here is that every country shut itself down after it knew it let this thing spread a little too much and this it's almost like a domino effect it's like hey mm-hmm. you got you got to close it now you got to fall earlier but no it did it very slowly, and then the next one did it very slowly, and it just it just happened that way. It, it, it's almost like it's almost like you know uh, I'm, I'm not saying this is what happened, but I'm just saying it's almost like a lot of these places, uh, these nations allowed for this to, to to progress beyond the point of containment. 
Well, and what you're saying is what's, you know, is there a bigger harm in people being feared, um, you know, for their existence and, um, and of course, uh, feared due to the uh, it, impact it has on, on the global economy. Melanie, and, and the media fear, I just life. wanted to add in there, and the media fear. The media is honestly, uh, I believe, in many cases, uh, is is specifically just if you look at it as a as a director as a, you know a news uh, professional that, that that I happen to be in in my past, it, it, it almost looks like a scripted plan to have people sit in their homes and shiver, you know, because the media really allocates all the media time to COVID nineteen, and it focuses on the bad on the extreme, and it just it really makes it look bleak as there's no hope for humanity. Hmm. However, I think we are now, this is, you know, um, in such a catastrophe, uh, which is then at a certain stage, probably really hard to handle. It's getting kind of out of control. Uh, and the question is, of course, who, who does not want to uh, let it go to waste, like you said, yeah. Um, um, how, who, who is uh, turning it into an advantage? Uh, I see, I'm, I'm not sure if, you know, we are drawing the picture through this mosaic too dark, um, but there is definitely, um, you know, you, you could imagine there are some people or some systems uh, seeking an advantage out of the situation. And I think this is where Selena could uh, 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 give her prospect, Selena, on the fact that uh, your team put together a very good research on who is, what are the opportunities here. And of course, what are the opportunities for small investors? Because even if the big fish are using this to their advantage in the world of AI, maybe in the world of uh, blockchain and big business, perhaps uh, there is something that the smaller public, you know, the small crypto investors that are out there, crypto enthusiasts who have some assets right now, and they're not really sure what to do because uh, as you mentioned earlier, Selena, they are in panic mode. They have, they are withholding their funds. Uh, but perhaps you can give us a clue on who is benefiting from this and who can we benefit with by co-investing or looking at certain areas of interest in the disruptive tech or just an overall S&P 500 markets. Yeah, very good question. And under this uh, volatile days, it's very difficult for the investors to decide uh, when is the right timing to buy at the bottom. And uh, in this case, after the sharp correction, and uh, we are starting to see a lot of values um, on both uh, equity markets and also blockchain-based uh, um, cryptocurrencies as well. And um, our investment horizon is around three months to uh, six months, more or less. And um, we acknowledge that the markets will likely continue to be very volatile, but they could get a recover uh, very quickly when dust settles and we, here we are talking about the dust is mainly talking about the coronavirus because as i mentioned previously that the government and also central bank has already taken uh, measures the macro um, uh, background is very benefit uh, right now for step in with your uh, own uh, assets for the investment, especially Fed. The FOMC announced another intermeeting and the cut on the interest rate on 15th of March, which is uh, around uh, 100 BP. So we expect the risk to remain at zero for the rest of 2020, which is the government to in each government from each country, they are trying to give the benefits back to the people as well. Same as ECB, SNB, BOE, and BOC. And here we have a few recommendations about like um, what you would like to have, which is like a cryptocurrency mining related, which we knew already that, that uh, there are the three main producers of graphics uh, processing units, which is NVIDIA, AMD, and also TSMC. 
So uh, these three um, shares are very interesting to step in and have another look, especially nowadays as we can see that uh, Bitcoin's price and has very attractive uh, uh, interim point right now. And um, very, um, um, very surprisingly that we can see the Bitcoin price now is coordinating with the stock market as well. So it can give us a lot of inspirations on that part, and it brought us to the deeper research as well. And if we look at the production of Intel and Accentura and uh, Pagamini, that um, is all blockchain-based solutions for the banking and the financial services. And also they have the in, uh, internal architecture extension to increase the security of blockchain data as well. We can look at on this session whenever we want to do the investment. And classically, as you mentioned, that since why the government is taking a miners control at the beginning of the uh, coronavirus, especially that uh, China was influenced with the coronavirus and the other governments like the EU, they are taking their time, majority of the governments, as we can see. And then the, the back part that we can see is um, missing the uh, medical equipment and the missing the head masks and the bracing machines so this is another uh, very important part that we would consider for investment, which is uh, the healthcare session. And um, there's a few uh, blockchain related uh, uh, pro um, uh, projects and also shares that we could consider. We can focus on the healthcare and also uh, the medical uh, insurance and also the medical uh, machineries companies as well, right. whenever we consider for the investment. So yeah, ventilators definitely, you know, the medical field, the banking field. So I mean, there is this healthcare that's uh, becoming more, uh, let's just say becoming bigger due to the fact that there needs to be more yeah. done due to this outbreak. And another one is very, very interesting is the online platform that uh, uh, since 2016 and 2017 are very interesting um, projects. Uh, we, we say it's a, pro C, um, it's a ICO year, 2016 and 2017. There's a lot of uh, ICOs pop out. So 2018 and 2019 is to see that uh, what's going on with those projects once they collect the money from the investors as well. There is a feel that um, it's better that people can search by themselves is the online purchasing um, platform and also for the consumers uh, based platform that you can buy and you can sell for, for example, like a property or uh, it's something like Alibaba as well with this kind of online platform, which, which is worth to invest, to look at as well. Interesting. So we're looking at potential growth in the sectors of healthcare, in the sectors of digital banking, and really digitalization of banking. Uh, and of course, uh, the decentralized disruptive tech space trying to, you know, cling on and, and move out on this as well. Uh, Melanie, what do you think? Does this digitalization that Selena spoke about in, in her... Um, uh, in her uh, report right now, uh, especially in the banking sphere, does this sort of coincide with some of the projections that I've mentioned as far as us going into a more technocratical, in, 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 in a more, you know, governments are pushing for, for blockchain and AI to serve their centralized interests as a result of this outbreak? Um, for sure, I mean, they will try uh, to move into this space with, uh, in, of course, uh, uh, in, in the banking, on the banking side, um, and also in, yeah, in collecting uh, more and more data. Um, however, I think that especially in such a crisis, it is us, you know, um, human humans and uh, communities to, um, I don't know, get together in a new way. And uh, I think uh, the past couple of weeks and months have shown us again how important um, 
yeah, connections, real connections, trusting each other, um, you know, how important this is and uh, how we might have lost it over, you know, just looking into um, what makes an economy drive uh, from a very financial capitalistic uh, point of view. And now we're getting uh, back to the real values. And I think there are so many opportunities now, um, you know, to, to, of course, to empower this with the technology, with blockchain technology or decentralized technologies. And I actually feel that governments and um, let's say systems who try to take advantage by um, um, implementing technology to gain more control will have hard times. They will have hard times because people sense it now. Can we really trust them? You know, have they done a good job in, 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 in maneuvering through such a crisis? And I think it's now the time for all the projects, all the projects that diligently worked on, uh, uh, you know, blockchain technology with a decentralized approach, uh, with trust mechanisms embedded in the technology that um, uh, um, tr that that allow us to interact with each other trustless. Um, that these have uh, great chances. And like Selena said, it's on the one hand, of course, anything now very um, uh, uh, important is anything about healthcare, but also the whole online business, the whole online space. I would go beyond the commerce space, but really going in what kind of technologies connect us uh, uh, in a new way. And so anything social, it, we have seen now, you know, all these social apps again, you know, on the rise. I, I also have uh, three kids and seeing how they used, uh, you know, their new technologies uh, from, from house party uh, to connect with each other to or e-learning, online learning, uh, exchanging uh, through all sorts of uh, video, um, you know, tools that we have at hand. I see uh, many opportunities and the question will be, um, how do we um, use this new technology or how um, are there technologies that are um, uh, not collecting or not empowering the, the, the you know, more governmental power or, or um, uh, collecting too much data that we don't want to be collected? Right. And I mean, e-learning, perfect. This is one of the things that we're looking personally at as the Future is Now Media Group. We will be launching an e-learning platform. Uh, especially for the children, for the kids, because uh, that's where the future is at. And unfortunately, due to this, uh, we don't know how long, but we even project that a lot of parents are going to say, wow, this is so comfortable. This is so good. You know, my child does not get the unnecessary peer pressure during the learning process. So during the lesson, my child is in front of a computer getting an interactive virtual lesson. And then when I want my child to experience the right interactions in a controlled environment live, you know, with kids that are definitely not, you know, uh, sick with anything or whatnot, then there are special things that can be arranged uh, for that uh, uh, during the bringing up of a child. But you mentioned yeah. very well about the e-learning. I think that's going to be a prospect that a lot of parents are going to realize is truly uh, not just an opportunity, but also a new way to perhaps uh, bring our future up in a better, more sophisticated way with the right knowledge at the right time. Um, and everything remote work, you know, remote work is now something uh, that we also experienced. Now we, everyone has to work remotely. Yeah. Um, well, it works. Yeah. In some ways it works very well. And there are so many new technologies empowering uh, us to, to work from wherever we want, whenever we want. And I see a great chance for the gig economy um, to rise up now. I mean, we were traveling all over the world. It was all conference, conference, conference. But now people can finally sit home and concentrate on their code, concentrate on their uh, you know, proof, of, uh, proof of work and uh, concentrate on their proof of concepts, you know? Uh, <laughs> so th there is definitely some positive coming out of this, and I agree, it's not all, you know, technocratical uh, loom and gloom uh, conspiracy that, that, that could perhaps be developing here, but, but we can also cling on to the positive sides uh, of this and, and see what the future holds for the economy. It's just the only 
The only question that I'm having is how tight or how much tighter the centralized control of the banking systems and the governments due to this virus uh, will uh, be implemented. Or implemented. Uh, because again, you know, if you're a government body, that's just something that you, it's a saying that you have in politics, you never let a good crisis go to waste. But where are the opportunities? Maybe we should really, um, I like to, you know, uh, stay positive. <laughs> and I like Selena's uh, outlook and research um, on what, where are the opportunities now? Yeah? And I definitely from for myself see a great opportunity, especially when the money is, uh, when, when the government is uh, pouring money uh, uh, into the markets uh, like uh, crazy. We will see how effective that is, and um, how, um, yeah, how in in this effective or ineffectiveness, um, the technology uh, of uh, cryptocurrencies and, and blockchain technology can show a potential alternative and an alternative asset class. Let's hope so. I mean, uh, definitely, you know, uh, and also see how well the government copes with. Or manages the crisis eventually, right? Yeah. Because I, I, you mentioned this earlier, and I completely agree that depending on how well this is managed now, is really how much trust will we allocate towards the government later. But as far as the industries, uh, ladies, I, I, I completely agree with Selena uh, and and yourself. It's healthcare. Uh, we have e-learning. Uh, we have uh, government digitalization industries. Okay, and I mean again, the, you know, the French uh, national. Uh, currency body is looking for blockchainers right now to build uh, a, a digital currency in France. It's actually on the official website. You can you can submit your application for anyone out there. Um, uh, then we of course have you know some forms of AI and disruptive technologies that could be again implemented here with the government. Without the government depends for various means again of medical applications, e-learning applications. Uh, and just overall big data applications that might be needed because it looks like we're going to have a need to be more online, more virtual, and that requires more data and more big data to manage uh, all of that uh, from potential needs to potential payouts and whatnot. Big economy. For me, this is really a totally underestimated part is, is new ways of working. Yeah, and, and I think there are so many... Uh, opportunities in, in maybe you know not everyone is going to have this uh, 20 uh, or this uh, uh, yeah five, nine hour eight hour uh, day job uh, in a corporate structure in the future it, it's gonna be you know maybe a half an hour here a half an hour there and you will you know sum up through to diverse gigs your monthly income and I see a great chance, you know, that uh, the gig economy uh, can can help many people to um, come to a very good monthly income. And ladies, I'd like to ask you, how are you both coping with the current situation in regards of your business, in regards of what you do? Uh, and how has that been coming along? I'd like to start with Selena, please. Um, me and my team, mainly we are working uh, from the home office right now. And uh, which is actually, I feel like uh, I'm quite comfortable with it as well. And uh, it's less chaos and uh, we could settle down and to do the deep research under these circumstances as well. And um, also at the meantime, and me and uh, our team, um, we have the assessment of uh, the valuation of the 2020 and the 2021. We analyzed uh, deeply about how the GDP is going to be for the big sessions globally. For example, we are analyzing like Switzerland uh, on 2020 is going to be minus 1%. And uh, USA is going to be 0.9%. And uh, last year, 2019, it has a plus 2.3%. And also EU, they have a, a minus 4%. And, um, but uh, for next year, 2021, EU is going to increase 5%. So um, another part is um, we had a look at the cooperative for pro, uh, profitability, which is EPS. For the EPS in the past uh, financial recession, on 2008 is from 18% to 35%. And uh, this year, 
and um, I think that uh, the investors and also we will based on the cooperative EPS uh, on 2021 forecast. We expect that it's not going to be far from 2019 EPS number, so which is good news. And this leads us to believe the market should be higher actually. Uh, comparing to the beginning of the year and it's going to be higher by later of 2020 so we are expecting even higher index by the um, second half of 2020 so let's have uh, very good uh, wishes based on our um, analysis based on the data and based on the past financial crisis. And we are confident that um, we are able to overcome all this. And uh, even now the data is not very optimistic, but we still keep a very positive and optimistic attitude to face this market and getting the best opportunities to our investors. Well, AA Union, Selena, that is great news. Thank you so much. Melanie, what about Wam Protocol? Mm -hmm. How has that been going for you under the current conditions? Yeah, I would say it has mainly uh, affected my uh, uh, life because I was traveling a lot uh, over the past three years, which of course is reduced to zero currently. Uh, but the uh, one team's working process is kind of really unaffected by uh, the current situation. We are anyway a distributed team uh, with members in Malta, Brazil, still in Korea and in Germany. And so we were founded on a remote and collaboration modus anyway, and um, established any kind of technology uh, to be used for that in our daily workflow. And so um, I would say we have the whole skill sets and um, everything set in house to continue uh, really unaffected and uninterrupted by the current uh, situation. And um, at the, on the other hand, uh, I think what we can see now is that in this crisis, I think BTC is staying strong and uh, in a good position. And I think it will show relevance uh, in oh my times God, like... Just now, by the way, sorry, breaking news. Bitcoin, 7,100, please. Yes, yes, 7, yes. 7,100. <laughs> exactly. It's. I mean, it's coming. It's of course always having its ups and downs. But we, you know, we are in this industry industry uh, since also all some time, and uh, of course strong believers. And whatever comes now in the next couple of months, and I actually see a chance that it kind of not. I wouldn't say decouples from the rest of the markets, but uh, that there is a chance that people discover um, the relevance of this technology, and with it, of course, it will have a positive impact on all our blockchain and decentralized technology projects well it is and, very uh, exciting i mean another breaking news yeah. melanie i don't know why but it's happening as we speak to you yeah. right now not only bitcoin up 20 percent in the last 24 hours but binance just finished the deal and acquired coin market cap there you go well <laughs> i'm a little bit skeptic about this yeah i have Yes, because I liked uh, coin market cap to be uh, more independent, and I would say it's time for a second source of uh, you know bring us trust and confidence. I agree with it's, you. That's the first thing you know, that came to my mind sign. when when Binance yeah. when I just read this this breaking news headline that Binance finished acquiring CMC. I mean, I agree. That's centralization. Great for Cent Binance. But it's but great it's, for Binance. But it's centralization <laughs> coming into our decentralized world. So. Is that good or bad? You know, that's a big question. I think there will be a new platform coming up in the next uh, uh, eight to twelve months. We will see more of these platforms like Coin Market Cap on the rise. And to finish this off, I'd like to ask you, ladies, for your wishes to the world. Uh, Selena, let's start with you. Stay strong, stay healthy, and stay positive to boost our uh, medical facility um, is very important that to help more people uh, avoid um, being dead for nothing. And uh, also um, to stay positive because we need to see the brighter side and uh, everybody eventually uh, the world are united. We can see that uh, the country to country, they are helping each other, they are supporting each other. And uh, we need to stay very strong as a, um, as a whole, as a, 
um, like the same, like the same family. That is very important. And we can see the air is much cleaner than before without the cars on the street. And uh, also we can see the people and the family are more united. They are staying with the kids. They begin to explore their own habits, which they never had the time to do it before. So this is uh, the positive part that uh, we are facing now. We have to stay very, very positive and uh, taking good care of themselves. That is very important. That's very true. I mean, with, 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 regardless whether this is a man manufactured crisis or not, and there's some big you know, corporate body that's benefiting from this or the families or whatnot, uh, I agree with Brock Pierce, and this resonates with what you just uh, said, Selena, as well. Uh, the global awakening that is happening now where people are coming together in new yeah. ways, starting from their families, going to their communities, to their businesses, and really discovering, you know, in the time of crisis, you adapt and you discover new ways of going forward. Uh, no matter how much darkness there may be around this whole thing, the light shall shine through. I completely agree with you. Uh, and Melanie, what would be your wish to to the world out there right now? What would you, your, your, your sort of words of wisdom to the people out there wow. <laughs> that's that's a big task i think it's uh it's a very good time to ask ourselves really what is important for us uh in life and um like selena said it's at the end uh we are coming back to a core and the core is the family and is the, the people we trust and whenever we talked about blockchain technology and really about decentralization, then it means always, you know, coming back to a very small core and, and l allowing little cores to connect to each other instead of putting, let's say, one block of data onto one server. This is where, you know, this, what decentralization means. It means really um, distribution um, of, of knowledge and, um, and this sets us to the, to the smallest core we can trust. So I think it's the, the whatever happened and whatever, if it was uh, made up, um, very often when, when people try to make things up and uh, initiate something that, yeah, turnout is, is different than they <laughs> wanted it to be. I think we are here on a very interesting point in, in a new history uh, for human mankind. Yes, let's hope for a good outcome, even though I'm sure yeah. we will find some, somebody will answer for this. We don't know who yet, but the light will shine through. So that is the global awakening that's at hand here, and it's happening right now in light of this very dark and mysterious global pandemic. Melanie uh, Moore, Selena C., AA Union, and WAM Capital, thank you so much for joining us at the Futures Now Digest. We got some dogs barking around. See, the energy is lively here at our secret undisclosed location in the Caribbean. We will see you on the next The Future Is Now. I'm Miguel Francis Santiago. Stay tuned for the future.